we will start with common input functions before going into the Laplace transform of common step functions. So we are not just going to see the Laplace transform of the step function, but the general input functions that we use in uh, signal systems and also many engineering input. The common input functions are basically in impulse function, unit step function, unit ramp function and also a parabolic function. And these input functions are termed as uh, general functions because these functions are used to test the new made systems and obtain the outputs which are really useful while we characterize the system. So the impulse function is mathematically represented as delta t is equal to infinity at t equal to 0 and 0 at t not equal to 0. So the impulse function gives you a lot of amplitude at t equal to 0 and no output remaining of the time. So when a goalkeeper or say a footballer kicks the football that kind of input that is given to the ball this particular kind of input is the impulse kind of function so impulse function is nothing but force into time all right so this is the dimension of any impulse force also delta t can also be modeled as integration delta t dt is equal to 1 so the area under this particular input graph or this particular graph which is shown by a red arrow is 1. So basically this is something like this. This is how the impulse function is distributed along t is equal to 0. And area under this curve is taken as equal to 1. Alright. So this is the impulse function. Uh, we will be looking at the Laplace transform of impulse function later. The next general function is a unit step function. It is kind of a switch when you switch on some light or a fan. The input before you switch on the light or a fan is zero and when you switch on the light or a fan the input remains constant. The switch input remains constant and it gives you uh, the output output in some kind of a form. So mathematically unit step function is modeled as u of t is equal to 1 for t greater than or equal to 0. For t is equal to 0, you can assume this is the time when you switched on the fan or light. After t equal to 0, you are giving constant input. Before that, there was no input. So, the amplitude of output is 0. The next general function is unit ramp function. Unit ramp is nothing but y is equal to x graph. It can be modeled as a knob which you see on a CRO. Sometimes you need to increase volume, maybe brightness, something which can be increased or decreased by this knob. Knob is actually connected to a potentiometer. Potentiometer varies the resistance and hence you get a constant change in output. So this is how you change the input constantly. The slope of this particular graph slope is 1. Let me write it. Alright. So when the slope of y equal to x graph or maybe y equal to kx, when k is 1, you say it is unit ramp function. If k is not equal to 1, you just say it is a ramp function. So this is also one of our general functions. Now next step is to see the Laplace transforms of all these functions. Let us check. So, what is the Laplace transform of impulse function? Let us quickly go through the definition of Laplace transform. So, when you have to know the Laplace transform of some particular function, say delta t. So, the Laplace transform is integration 0 to infinity. Delta t e raised to minus s t dt is equal to 1. Now, because the impulse function is a little complicated to understand, let us quickly assume the basic definition behind it, the area under the impulse function should be 1. So let us assume a square pulse starting from t equal to 0 and ending at t is equal to a. Now for this pulse with area 1, the height should be 1 upon a, right? Now this pulse can be written mathematically as u of t 
minus u of t minus k. So basically, what you are doing, you first draw u of t, all right, and then subtract u of t minus a from it, all right. This is u of t minus a starting at t is equal to a. So this shaded region is neglected, and you just remain with the square points. This is how you can model it mathematically. But the amplitude is one upon a, and hence we have multiplied it by one upon a. Also, now for impulse function, impulse function exists at t equal to zero. So we have to reduce this particular width a, and we are going to take limit as a tends to zero, and then we are finding the Laplace transform. What is Laplace transform of u of t? U of t's Laplace transform is one upon s minus U of t minus a is Laplace transform. According to the properties of Laplace transform, you know you multiply the Laplace transform of U of t by e raised to minus a s. So basically, the combination of Laplace transforms is one minus e raised to minus a s upon s into one upon a. All right. If you expand e raised to minus a s, you get one minus a s plus a square a square. Upon two factorial plus a cube s cube three factorial and so on. If you solve this mathematically, you get one when this a and this a gets cancelled. This one and this one gets cancelled, and all the other s functions get cancelled, and a is ultimately going towards zero. So all the other functions tend to zero, and you get Laplace transform is equal to one. So this is the proof that The Laplace transform of impulse function delta d is equal to one. Let us see Laplace transform of step functions. The step function is nothing but u of t, u of t into e raised to minus s t dt. U of t's value is one for zero to infinity. So ultimately, we can replace this u of t by one for limits zero to infinity. By doing so, we ultimately get the Laplace transform as one upon s. If you can solve this simply. You are going to get one upon s. Let us check how we can find out the Laplace transform using the definition for u of t minus a. U of t minus a's value will be one for t greater than or equal to a. All right. So if you put it in the definition, the limits will change from zero to infinity to a to infinity. And if you solve this function, let me write dt here. This will be the Laplace transform. So also from the definition, you have solved for the Laplace transform of u of t minus a. For a quick example, let us see. Let us see what is the Laplace transform of this particular square pulse. This square pulse is nothing but a combination of pulse from u of t minus one, which will extend far from here, and then you are going to subtract a pulse or a unit step which starts at four. So this much has been neglected or subtracted from u of t minus. A. One and hence you are subtracting u of t minus two. The Laplace transform of u of t minus one is e raised to minus s upon s and minus e raised to minus four s upon s. So this is the Laplace transform. Now we are going to see the Laplace transform of RAM functions. The RAM function is simply modeled by R of t. We are just going to put R of t is equal to t or zero to infinity. You have to solve this by integration by parts. If you solve this by integration by parts, you will need you will get one upon s square as the Laplace transform. You have already seen the Laplace transform for t raised to n is equal to n factorial divided by s raised to n plus one. This matches. The definition Laplace transform. Let us see the example that we have written here. This is the combination of different ramps. The ramp here starts from zero and ends at one. Another ramp, which is negative, which starts at one and ends at two. So this is the combination of R of t. That means R of t, which is starting at zero, and minus R of t minus one. So For ending this ramp, you have to subtract this ramp at r of t t is equal to one. So basically, this is 
nothing but this value. Now we have negative ramp. Negative ramp with ramp or slope value is equal to 1. So you have R of t minus 1. This negative ramp is starting at t is equal to 1. So you get you have started here with minus R of t minus 1 and at R at t is equal to 2 you have to end this initiated ramp but this has to be ended at t is equal to 2. So you will add plus RT of minus 2. So this is how you can combine the ramp functions to get this particular triangular wave. And now by using the original function and the shifting property you can get the final value as 1 minus 2 into e raise to minus s plus e raise to minus 2s divided by s square as Laplace transform. I hope you have understood the Laplace transforms of basic general functions. I will meet you again whenever you call me that. Thank you so much.